Some day happy chat time. Hello there. Hump day happy chat time. I'm Dr. Valerie Renee Shepherd. I'm coming to you live from the Hartley Center. Hartley Center now in southern France. Still bopping around in southern France. Enjoying the heck out of southern France. So I'm Dr. Valerie Renee Shepherd and the Hartley Center is where happiness comes together on the foundation of self-mastery. Self-mastery is mastering you in your life so that you can exquisitely manage whatever your life brings your way. And we are all about anchoring life in spiritual law and creating more peace, love, joy, happiness, good juju on the planet. It's a mission that is um, fulfilling and delightful in many, many ways. And how are you doing out there with your quest, your quest for happiness? Members of the Bliss Collective who are looking at how do we activate more bliss in our lives on a daily basis, bliss being one of the highest forms of, of joy. It's, it's like happiness and joy and bliss, like getting like in there and hanging out in there, staying in there, being, being there. I say yabba dabba do to that. I hope you're enjoying these hump day happy chats. My intention is that they come into your world with some nuggets of wisdom and inspiration and truth and um, light and love and joy that can help you kind of diagnose the dynamics of your life and shift them, shift them. The whole idea is that you activate the higher consciousness that is within you in order to live a life that is worthy of you. A life that is, I always say, a life that you love, 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 love living. That you love to live. That it's like, you are constantly saying, how can my life be this good? How can it be this joy-filled? Like, wow, I'll take more. So that's what the Hartley Center is all about. That's what the mission of the hump day happy chats is provide you with means not memes we do that too <laughs> means <laughs> to have a bigger smile in your heart and so today um, musings on consciousness rising it's just, I just have been feeling like I've been letting things percolate and it feels good. I came to you, I think, last week from Montségur and uh, that was fun. And today I was just musings, sitting around musing a lot this week. Amusing, according to Oxford Dictionary, is a period of reflection or thought. Contemplation, reflection. Now, those words can bring up fear inside some people. Like, what? I don't want to contemplate. I don't want to reflect. I got to get things done. So I just want to talk about the beauty inside this concept of musing. So some of the qualities that I love to experience as myself that are inside this, is it an activity? I guess we could call it an activity, musing. One of the qualities inside musing that I, oh my gosh, I've fallen in love with is slowing down. I can be a very impatient person to get somewhere, to accomplish more. Like, I need to make things happen. Or that's the story I've told myself for many, many years. 
There are reasons behind that. We don't need to go into them now, but check in with yourself. Slowing down is such a beautiful thing that I get out of musing. But it hasn't always been that way. There's a chase inside me that wants to be activated. A chase toward a whole bunch of things. Some of them matter, some of the time. A lot of them don't matter a hill of beans. And yet the conditioning of me has me wondering if I should be doing more of that. When I'm musing, I'm breathing more deeply because there's nothing to do or nowhere to go. So I can just ah, sit, stare off into the distance. I do a lot of musing when I'm walking. I do a lot of musing when I'm just laying in the grass, looking at the sky, breathing more deeply. Have you ever like stopped and caught yourself, like actually noticed that you don't breathe very deeply? Millions of us don't breathe very deeply. Millions of us are missing out on oxygenating the blood and which oxygenates the body and the brain. And it's kind of crucial. But we've learned to be in fight or flight or flee so much that we aren't really serving our bodies with the ways that we breathe. And so when I'm just contemplating, I notice I'm breathing deeper. I love tuning in. Tuning in. Now the world out there wants you to be tuned out of yourself, to be focused on everything going on around you. What he said, what she did, what they didn't do, <laughs> what they forgot to say. And of course, on all the things that are wrong with you, with them, with everything. And musing mm, just gives me the opportunity to tune more deeply inward. Not looking for anything or going anywhere necessarily. Just pondering. When I'm musing or pondering or contemplating or reflecting, I'm allowing. I'm allowing a lot more. Allowing, letting what is be what is without taking exception to it, without judging it, without trying to change it, without making it wrong or right. Just allowing. Like right now, I'm allowing, there's a big fly buzzing around. A couple minutes ago, you, <laughs> you would have seen me going like this because... I thought he landed on my hair in my hair and was in there. <laughs> my hair is kind of thick and I get really a little bit freaked out <laughs> when I think like a bug's in it because I'm like, what if I forget the bug's in there or I don't actually know it's in there and it creates a nest. Here's amusing, creates a nest and it has babies <laughs> and they attack me in the night. <laughs> That's a sort of a quirky, ridiculous musing, but it's nonetheless. So allowing, allowing, oh, there he is, allowing the fly <laughs> without really worrying about, I mean, I really, I've known this fly is in here for a while and I just can't be bothered with getting up to let him out right now. Allowing, no need to change what is to something else. And then the favorite thing of mine inside musing is receiving, receiving. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you, but I don't believe that I was really taught to receive. In fact, I've met very few people who believe they have been taught to receive. 
we've been taught very well, very enculturated to give. In fact, we say platitudes about giving is the best way to receive. I don't believe that anymore. Receiving is its own thing. It's a part of a cycle of reciprocity. And you can't have in the spiritual realm, the idea of having one without the other is throws things off energetically. That's a whole nother hump day happy chat. But I love receiving now. And in this idea of musing, I receive rest because my brain is not running a thousand miles a minute solving problems. Oh, he's going to fly right into the <laughs> camera in a minute. Hello, fly. I see you. <laughs> now you can see him too. <laughs> see, I'm not kidding. <laughs> beauty. I receive the regalness of nature, Mr. Fly included. Ideas that come, kind of answers that might pop in for something I was musing about a few days ago. I feel a deeper connection to myself. When I'm musing, I get receive perspective. Usually something pops in that gets a chuckle out of me. Musings on consciousness rising. So like, here's some that I was thinking about today. I was down by the lake and just staring off into the magnificence and I was thinking, isn't it interesting that I choose to worry about things in the here and now, even though everything in my here and now is in divine order and flow? Why would I do that? What am I getting from this sort of low vibration use of my energy and, and attention. Hmm. Where did I learn that? Hmm. Another thing I've mused about lately. When will I value rest? <laughs> as much as I value productivity. Hmm. What might happen when I do? Especially for, ow, I hit my elbow. Especially for someone like me who feels like I am constantly tired. I wake up tired. I think I'm resting more. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I still haven't figured that out. Hmm. Another thing I love to muse about is how lovely my life is when I stop needing to fix something in it. And the thing I like to fix the most is me. Like when I stop needing to fix something about me, how lovely my life can be when I just mm, flow through it being the me that I am right now till I 
raise my consciousness even higher and see things from an even different perspective and grow into that new self? How can I just have my life be delicious with it as it is, with me as I am? Hmm. How much more ease and gentleness and peace is there? And how much effort can I conserve when I simply ask for help? Hmm. Why don't I ask for help more? How much better I feel every time I just let love win. It's one of my sticky notes on my computer. How can I feel better now and let love win? It's kind of tattered. The sticky's not even sticking on it very much, but it sits on my laptop for when I'm here in front of it. How expanded I feel when I'm in nature, being flooded by her sights and sounds and smells, needing to go nowhere. These are just some of my musings. What are yours? There's not a rule of thumb here about how a musing has to happen or when or where. I do believe for any of you out there who say you have difficulty with meditation, like you can't quiet your mind, you could think of musings as a practice, a baby step practice on the way to meditation or perhaps a form of contemplative prayer. You can find out what's just below the surface in your mind and your heart. The what if scenarios are great kind of musings. What if I just do nothing? My mom called me the other night, I guess it was last night, asking for some guidance on something. And that's the guidance I gave her. What if you did nothing? Does this have to be resolved right now? Or can you, I don't know, put it off 24 hours, 48 hours, see what happens, and then make a choice. So what if scenarios can bring up good energy around, huh, hmm, I like that deep breath, told ya, <laughs> breathing deeply. The whole thing here though, musings are an opportunity to relax a little bit. So it would benefit you to go into them without needing to get somewhere, meaning it's not the same as conscious thought toward an end goal. It's not focused on getting an answer. Answers might come, but it's more about loving the question. It's more about being calm in your mind for all that is unresolved and just learning to love dancing in the question dancing in the nothingness and seeing what happens and allowing nothing to happen and calling that enough, calling that super, calling that 
phenomenal. The last thing I would say is that I've been talking about muse as the verb. There's also muse as the noun, which means a source of inspiration, artistic inspiration. So there were people known as muses. They were nine goddesses in Greek mythology. They symbolize the arts and the sciences. And today, a muse is a person who creates that inspiration, is somehow inspiring to the artist. And what if you could just anoint yourself, artist, no matter what you're doing, and be your own muse? Like, what would those qualities be? How could you rejuvenate yourself, inspire yourself to create from your depths, the depths within you, to unleash the higher vibration you so that it can really shine in your life, even while the low vibration aspects of you are being put to rest. Perhaps giving yourself some spaciousness in your calendar and some spaciousness in your doingness, some spaciousness in your efforting will allow you to have that kind of relationship with yourself. I say in my book, it's the most important relationship you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. So I 100% believe that I can be my own muse. And it requires me to turn my focus away from all the things I tell myself are so critically important. Get into accepting, allowing, and receiving, breathing deeply, and resting, learning, and I think we do have to learn how to do nothing and be everything. That's it for today's Hump Day Happy Chat. So glad that you joined me. Hashtag replay when you're watching the replay. I'd love for you to share this. Somebody out there could use some positivity, some consciousness rising in their life. Many blessings. We always close the hump day happy chat with the Karnaya Metta Sutra, the Sutta, the prayer of loving kindness from the Buddha, which goes like this. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be safe. May all beings be be happy. May all beings awaken to the light of their true nature. And may all beings be free. Yay. That's it for the hump day. Happy chat. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your comments. Many blessings. Bye now.